the flip down. Funny. I think that we have to mute now. From spilling the light, we hold hope close. In this community, we hold hope close. We don't always know what comes next, but that cannot dissuade us. We don't always know what to do, but that will not mean that, we, that they are lost in the wilderness. We rely on uncertainty beneath, we rely on the certainty beneath the foundation of our values and ethics. We are the people who return to love, like a North Star, to the truth that we are greater together than we are alone. We hope, our hope does not live in some glimmer of an indistinct future. Rather, we know the way to the world of which we dream, and by covenant, and the movement forward of one right action and the next. We know that one day we will arrive at hope. Spilling the light from, um, that's from Spilling the Light, Meditations on Hope and Resilience from Reverend Julian Hermichael's Soto. Good morning, it's so nice to see you on this August morning. Um, it's getting cool. And I'm thankful. Uh, are there announcements? Did I say Rosemary or Rosemary? Love is the center. As we grow and connect, mature and deepen, love remains the center. When the light of truth burns all else away, love remains. Please stand for our affirmation. Love is the doctrine of this church. Our faith in each other is a sacrament. 
working for justice and living with compassion is its prayer. We covenant together to side with love, to heal and to not harm, and to share hope with each other and with the world. Please, as you are standing, turn in 134 in the gray hymnal, Our World is One World. Thank you, Annie. I think we read this recently, but it's kind of one of my favorites. Our story for all ages is You Matter by Christian Robinson. For anyone who isn't sure if they matter, you do. The small stuff, too small to see. Those who swim with the tide and those who don't. The first to go and the last, you matter. When everyone thinks you're a pest, when something is just out of reach, when everyone is too busy to help, you matter. If you fall down, if you have to start all over again. Even if, even if you are really gassy, you matter. So cute. Sometimes home is far away. Sometimes someone you love says goodbye. Sometimes you feel lost and alone, but you matter. Old and young the first to go and the last, the small stuff too small to see, you matter. Today, um, we're going to continuing, continue to learn our new meditation, which is a meditation of boundless equi equanimity. So, please sit comfortably in your pew. Feet on the floor if that works for you. Back against the bench. Whatever works. Try to clear your mind. Still your mind. Eyes open, eyes closed. Buddhists speak of having a boundless heart. 
an attitude that you have with or towards the world. To live in peace, you must have an open heart, a compassionate heart. A closed heart is a biased heart, a heart full of grief. It is filled with dislikes and indifferences. It cuts you off from yourself and others. It creates pain. Pain because there is something that sits inside of you, undigested. So therefore, what we seek is an open heart. Our open heart is a healing heart. It's a growing heart. It's a loving heart. So as you find that place that you feel grounded, straighten your back, fill your lungs with every inhalation, emptying your lungs with every exhalation. And with every exhalation, let it ground you. Breathe in, breathe out. Allow there to be a connection between the body and your breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Now, using your imagination, imagine someone you love off to the left side of you. Looking at that person or that thing or that animal, that creature, breathe in and breathe out. And as you imagine this person on, or, or creature on the left hand, feel, feel all those warm feelings. Feel, feel them breathing in and breathing out. Notice the connection you are making between your body, your breaths, and your feelings. Breathing in, breathing out. Notice maybe how your heart opens up at the sight of this person on the left. Now, changing your focus, move to the middle. And imagine someone or something you feel anger towards. Feeling those feelings, breathe in and breathe out. Notice the connection you have made between your body, your breath, and your feelings. Maybe, sometimes, these feelings can be difficult. Don't turn your attention away. Breathe in, breathe out. Ask yourself, how can I allow more equanimity in my feelings? Ask yourself, how can I open my heart? Noticing those feelings, turn your attention to your right side. Imagine someone or something you feel indifferent about. Feel those feelings. Breathe in, breathe out. Notice the connection you've made between your body, your breath, and your feelings. Don't turn your attention away. Breathe in, breathe out. And now ask yourself, how can I allow more equanimity towards this indifference? How do I open my heart? Now I want you to take in the quality of each of these things, these people, these creatures in front of you, whether you're visualizing them or just reflecting on them. Notice now the shift that took place. Sometimes these shifts are very small and incremental. That's okay. We're not looking for some big aha experience. 
But when you look to the left, maybe you had a big grin. When you look to the middle, maybe you clenched a little, but you noticed you relaxed and opened your heart just a little. Whatever is happening, it's okay, because we're practicing. Even if you came up with a lot of difficulty here, that's okay, because we're practicing. We're just practicing letting go of any conclusions that we have before we started. But noticing now what shifted in your reaction versus what was your response. Notice how your relation to, relationship to openness is now. And if you're noticing a deeper relationship to opening, openness, rest with that, N noticing for a few moments. And now I invite you to return to the sanctuary. Open your hearts, keeping that open heart feeling. This is a practice that I hope you can repeat during the week because practice makes more openness and openness leads to love. May it be so. Please, as you are able, stay seated. Hymn number 123 in the gray hymnal. Probably you know it by now. If you don't know the words, just hum it. It's spirit of life. Please stand and sing hymn number 18, What Wondrous Love Is This?
was thinking that Scott said he knew um, his friend since 1989. I was thinking, wow, I was just a baby then. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> how is everyone? Summer is winding down, and you know how I know that? When Scooby and I go for a walk in the morning, it's darker. The, it, is the, the, um, it is getting darker earlier or later, whatever that is. It's getting lighter later. Um, but in the mo with that, there are fewer people out in the morning. The air is crisp. The sky seems bigger. Um, being a human being seems a little bit easier in the morning. I notice the change of the sound of my footsteps on the brick and then on the pavement in a kind of a rhythm that is calming and invigorating. Being out there in the earth and the world is kind of beautiful. And I'm beginning to see why you year-rounders love it. This is the beginning of um, the year for me and us together. And I've been trying to sort out what our focus of this year would be. Last year was a process of discovery. I found out about who you are, your budget, your committees, who attends church regularly in the winter, and then who doesn't, I mean, who attends in the summer. I listened as you spoke of your hopes and your desires for this church. I heard you describe your disappointments. And I've been thinking a lot about next steps. So guess what? We're going to start talking UU theology. Every day that this church is open, hanging off of this diocese where Frederick Douglass once spoke, is a wonderful gift. Walking through this do those doors, you immediately see this beautiful representation of UU theology. Now, question, how many of you all know what it really means? So maybe it's time to put words to this represent, representation. Maybe it's time to engage it. Since I came to UU uh, Unitarian Universalist Church of Nantucket, I've been asking, well, what does it mean to be a UU church? What do you believe in? What are the fundamental truths that holds you close, that you hold in your heart? What are the basic values that you ascribe to? And how do these values define who you are, the decisions you make, and what you do? So I have a question for you all. We have a visitor, Scott. He just walked in the building. He's looking at the hangings, and he turns around and he says, what, does that, what is the meaning of that hanging? What would you say to him? Would you say, there's this great quilter in the, in the church whose name is Susan, and she uh, demonstrated love by doing this for us? How would you describe what you believe? Let me give you a hint. Any answer you give has to start with the idea that we are not a building. We are not simply a place for public worship. We are a movement. Our focus is to make this a better world for every creature. Creature, We do social justice. We are, not cre we are non creedal we are cover covidential and we are built around love. Let the church say amen. We have a shared ministry. We are all in this together. What we build here, we build together. What we don't build, we build together. What you do, the decisions made cannot come from one person, but are collectively arrived at. We hold each other accountable and we do it with love. In everything we do, we must center love. Now, I know you say, what's this love thing? Love who? Love what? Love when? How are you defining it? 
Each president of the UUA edits and publishes a book. I shared with the, some, you, some of you the last books. Our current president is Sof Sophia Bentoncourt, and she published her book. And it's, the title is Love at the Center, Unitarian Universalist Theology. It's chock full of exciting essays. The first one is written by N Reverend Nancy McDonald, and is McDonald Glad, and is entitled The Theology of Love. Love was never a monologue, she writes. She proposes that you don't do love by yourself. You can't do love in a vacuum. You can't admire it from afar. It's not done in like isolation. It is not a monologue. In this paper, she makes the case that theology is not an inner conversation or monologue um, for one's own clarification and edification. She writes, it's, 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 it's not how you define it within yourself, for yourself. It must be contextualized. It must be in, a, in conversation with others. Reverend, um, McDonald Laz asks you to ask yourself, with whom am I in holy accountable relationship? Holy, H-O-L, not W-H. Recall, she asked you to consider who are you are, are in covenant with? What does that covenant ask of you? And how does that covenant hold you in relationship? A relationship that forces you to always be larger than yourselves. She says see, theology is not about you, one, it's about us. Now, you all tell me, what does covenant mean? I'll take any answers. Yes? So it's about something about an agreement. Everybody has to be a part of it. Does that sound right? I think we have to delve, de delve more deeply into this because covenant is, is at the center, and I think you're right. A covenant is a commitment made between two or more people or two or more groups. It's a promise a pact, a bargain. In theology, in the Bible it says, God made a covenant with the Israelites. So it's not just a promise, it's a big promise. It's a special promise. Excitingly, love exists in covenant. It exists in relationship to each other. It exists in the beloved. Love is inher in inherently relationship, relational. It does not require individual defensiveness and self-protection. -prote to do love is to, do, is to not do it alone. So how you generate life-giving hope with the, for those around you is, do, is with a collective act of love. Since I started working here, we've been talking a lot about love and community. I quoted Bell Hooks who said, love is the will to extend oneself to nurture one's own or another's spiritual growth. Love is as love does. Love is an act of will, both intention and action. In other words, love is not something you, that just sits there, it's something you do. You, you Nantucket congregation, friends, it's time for us to rethink how this congregation does love. We need to understand what promises we make to each other every single day. What promises do you make when you walk in and you smile at somebody and say, I'm so happy to see you. What promises do you make when you walk into somebody and you turn your head and you don't notice them? 
What promises do you make as you sit together and you decide the next steps? There's a lot for us to learn. We have to understand what our values are, how we prioritize them, and how do we live into them. To love is not an inward personal idea. It is purposeful, demonstrable, and enjoyable. It creates the beloved community. What would love look like here? Well, there are clues. Love would talk about justice. It would say, um, which asks us to work for a better world for everyone with the goal of creating a beloved community. Love would emphasize justice. We would lift up pluralism, meaning it is not my way or the highway, nor, is it, nor does it mean there is only one way, which is the right way. We would celebrate that we have many sources that inspire us and that we make room for different cultures, different experiences, and different beliefs. We understand that we are independent, interdependent. We understand that we are interdependent, meaning that we are all connected and we do not have the privilege of eschewing anyone. Not eschewing people, not eschewing creatures, not sharing planets because we're all connected and we hold them close to us and we must honor them and we must take care of them. Love would teach us about generosity and a giving heart. We would share what we have and we are grateful both for the ability to share and the ability to give and most importantly, the ability to accept with an open heart. We do this because we are in search of an equitable world a world that is peaceful and fair, where we all have what we need. Can you imagine if there wasn't a need for the warming place? Do you all know what the warming place is? Can you imagine if on Nantucket there was not a need for the warming place? That everybody had what they needed. And that we didn't have to worry about whether folks had showers in the winter or enough to eat or whether they would be warm. And we wouldn't need that program down there whose name just left me um, to make sure that people have enough resources to pay their rent to get their food. Can you imagine that kind of equitable world? Unitarian Universalists, us Unitarian Universalists are not stagnant. We don't, we, we're not a part of a stagnant religion. We seek transformation and we keep going and growing and learning together. We change and we do it with a happy, open heart, not begrudgingly. Is that right? Can't hear you. Maybe. <laughs> Something to strive for. Love ain't easy. Walking around with an open heart ain't easy. Being accepting ain't easy. Let me tell you, I walk around this island all the time, very different from everybody else, getting lots of projections, and I say, you gotta love. You gotta love. When I, my son was first born, so I can go back 100 years, and I walked into a famous toy store. I, at that point, was a senior executive making a lot of money. I walked in the store and suddenly I was being followed. You gotta love. You gotta love. Our Unitarian Universalist movement, religion, which is not stagnant, asks that we center love and that we keep it in front of us that we walk with an open heart, that we notice the pain that closes a heart that has to do with the other, and we open our heart and we keep moving. 
Love is hard. But I invite you to join me on this march. I invite you to enjoy, enjoy me in this love. I invite you to learn more about you, you theology. I ask you to tell me, what do you know about love? I can't wait to hear your answers. May it be so. Blessed be. Amen. time in our service when we when we oh it is time in our service when we offer up support um, to continue to work to do the work of this church of this church we really do appreciate the time um, you give to us and we we humbly ask if you can help by donating some of your treasures uh, we, we use this to continue the programs of the church. So as you are able, the, there's people coming down the aisle with um, baskets, and on uh, Zoom, there is a link. As you are able, please give. Thank you.
Please join me in singing, standing and singing the doxology found in your order of service. Thank you for your generosity. Please, hymn number yep, 299 in the gray hymnal. The blessing. Love is the aspiration, the spirit that moves and inspires this faith we share. Rightly understood, love can spare our spirits and transform the world. May the flame of this chalice honors and embody the power and the blessing of the love we need, the love we give, the love we are challenged always to remember and to share. <clears throat> 